Hey everybody, just back with another video. So I'm sure some of you have now heard that there is going to be some writing changes um, in Ontario and Quebec and Alberta's getting three new seats and you're also going to have Quebec losing a seat, Ontario gains one, and you also are going to have British Columbia gain a seat because of the expanding population in those provinces or depopulation in Quebec and that's why they're losing one seat. And you know, basically what this means is now instead of having 338 members of parliament, we're going to have 342, which also means you now need 172 uh, seats to get a majority instead of 170. So just in case you were wondering <clears throat> if this worries you a little bit, if you're a conservative, it shouldn't worry you at all. If you're liberal, I mean, this is just another another group of losses that you're going to have to deal with because the Northern Ontario riding... Now, it's been NDP for a while, but it's it's trending conservative. The three seats Alberta are getting are most likely going to go all conservative. And the, the one in BC, I'm not sure where that one is, so I'm not sure if it's going to go conservative or NDP. Either way, the Liberals are not getting any gains out of any of these new riding changes. So uh, I just have a little a bit of a video here, just um, it's about two minutes long, just to kind of break it down a little bit and what this means for Pierre Polyev and the Conservatives and, of course, his supporters. So let's have a look at this and then we'll react to it after, like usual. Federal Conservative leader Pierre Polyev has been touring northern Ontario this week. He held a rally in Kirkland Lake last night to a packed crowd touting affordability concerns and disappointment in the Trudeau government. CTV's Sergio Arangio has more. Jagmeet Singh and Charlie Angus have betrayed the people, the working class people. Conservatives see blue in the orange waters of this northern Ontario riding, and judging by the crowd, Pierre Polyev has large support in Kirkland Lake and area. Wonderful changes in the future. He understands what we need. We don't. We need common sense. We need money. As a young person, it gives me hope for the future. Because when I'll get older and try to buy a house. I think he's the weird guy who wants. Polyev's axe the tax motto was popular with his supporters as he highlights what he calls the Trudeau government's failure to address higher costs of living and inflation. People can't afford to eat, heat, or house themselves. And they're supporting my common sense plan to axe the carbon tax, um, lower income tax, and cap spending to bring down inflation and interest rates. While the New Democrats put the blame of higher grocery costs on corporations, Polyev centers on the government's inaction. His key criticism of NDP leader Jagmeet Singh being his deal to support the Liberals. Tell Singh, he gets his pension, Trudeau gets power, you get the bill. It's a powerful message according to Northern political science professor David Tabachnik, who calls it smart politics that favors emotion over accuracy. He says growing conservative popularity is making its way north. Northern Ontario has become something of a battleground. Uh, this has been building the last few election cycles. A battleground that new Democrats risk losing since two longtime MPs plan to retire and federal riding borders are redrawn with one less northern seat. So I love how at the sorry about that. I love how at the end they were saying, well, you know, it's smart politics. He's playing towards emotion and not accuracy. Why are people emotional right now? Why are people panicking? Why are they stressed out? Because the country is being destroyed in real time. That's not playing to emotion. It's playing to fact. Hey, we need some conservatism back in the government right now because the incredibly irresponsible liberals have spent way too much and got nothing done. That's why people are freaking out right now. They haven't really served the people with the issues that the, the, the people have been talking about. With housing has been a, a rent going up and you know over-immigration and crime, and these things have been happening for a few years now. It's just all starting to come to a head because it's getting worse and worse and worse, and people, including myself, are tired of it. That's not playing smart politics. That's literally playing common sense. And then what Pierre Polyev says is you know, it's he's dead on. Jagmeet Singh gets this pension. Justin gets the power. And the people get to pay the bill. We get to pay for it. And that's why they have their coalition, because it works out for them. And it's the opposite for us. And more and more people are starting to see it. Somehow there's still going to be people who vote liberal, even after that disgraceful committee meeting the other day with, with that uh, Kate Alexander uh, woman who was horrifically abused. And they just hijacked her meeting. Liberals still have support. 
And what's the group that votes more liberal than conservative? Women do. So ladies, if you're watching this and you see that committee, which if you haven't, you I strongly suggest you go watch it. Are you still voting liberal after you see that? You still vote an NDP after you see that? Because that was disgusting. And all this time we've heard that conservatives hate women. Conservatives don't care about us. It's the people you've actually voted for who don't care about us. So hopefully that'll change your mind. Because if not, then I don't know what else will. I mean, if you're that indoctrinated into liberalism, I guess you're just too far gone. But seeing something like that, if you're a liberal woman, that should have disgusted you what you saw the other day. And then hopefully we learn from it so that shit doesn't happen again, so that abusers actually get jail time, not a peace bond, which basically means, oh, just leave her alone. But again, it's just more scandals, more incompetence, more evil from this liberal party that we've seen that it's just getting worse and worse and worse over the past nine years. When when is Canada when is Canada going to have enough have enough of this? When are the Canadian populace going to stand up and say, hey, look, we're done with this. We need a change. Maybe you don't trust Pierre Polyev, maybe you don't like him, but what's happening under this coalition is disgusting and it needs to be ended now. And with these new extra ridings, especially in Alberta and Ontario, that just means more seats for the Conservatives. The Liberals and the NDP, I mean, maybe the NDP gets one of them. Liberals ain't getting any of them. In Quebec, you know, they can be upset that they're losing a seat and they can whine. First of all, the Bloc shouldn't even be an official party in Canada. Why are they the only province? that has a national party where no one else votes for them other than people inside their province, essentially throwing away their vote. Even that being said, there's a decent chance the bloc comes in second place in terms of seat ridings, which means that they would actually be the official opposition. And the liberals and the NDPs and the green parties will be sitting in the corner playing with themselves. That's all they're going to have to do because they're not really going to have much of a voice. They're not going to have much much, uh, representation in the House of Commons, in Parliament, because a, a bunch of them are about to lose their jobs and be replaced with conservatives. Now, I'll be honest with you. I, again, I've said this before. I'll say it again. I don't trust the conservatives. However, as a populist or libertarian, I don't have anyone else to go to go with. Voting PPC, even though it's technically where I should be voting, I do not like their leader. I think he's weak. He can't win a riding. We'll see what happens. Maybe the next time he... You know, he runs in a by-election. He can do something and win and finally start making some progress. I know it takes time. I know it takes a few years to get yourself in, but it's about time. Like, he's been in there for a few years now. He's got to win soon. He's got to make progress or the party just needs to get rid of him and get someone who can. And they've got a lot of work to do. But if, if they can start just showing everyone that they're serious, I'll vote for them. But until they do, it's conservative or nothing. The only way I would not just back down and just not vote at all is if I hear some, you know, warmongering, warmongering type of stuff from Pierre Polyev, which I am worried about. Him and his wife were talking about Venezuela and, oh, we're concerned about these elections. And even Christian Freeland and Trudeau have agreed with this. Well, that's weird. Why, why do conservatives and liberals agree? Or when is the only situation where conservatives and liberals agree? It's when there is a war to be had and the military contractors can make money. And and then in the name of democracy, by the way, which that's not what happens. We never go over there for democracy. We're going over there for their assets and we're going to kill a lot of people doing it. If I hear any of that kind of talk from Pierre Polyev, not that he would admit it that way. He would just say, no, we're going over there because democracy is important. That's what they always say. They've been saying it for what, 50 years now? We got to save democracy in other countries. We don't care about democracy in our own country, but we got to go and save it in another country. Bullshit. I hear any of this warmongering, warhawk nonsense, I won't vote. I'm never, ever, ever, ever going to vote or support a warmonger. It's not going to happen. I would still maybe prefer Pierre Polyev over Justin Trudeau, but that's because there's no non-warmonger option. Right on fiscal issues, you know, on immigration and housing, and Pierre Polyev is clearly much better, crime, etc. But if he's going to be a war hawk, just like Justin Trudeau, or just like the the friggin' politicians down in the states, then he could take my vote and stick it up his ass. I won't vote for him, and I don't care how many of you that pisses off. I know it's going to piss off some people, but 
I, I'll never vote for someone who is will blatantly admit before an election that they want to go to war, which they haven't done yet. So, or not that I've heard at least. If you've heard differently, please let me know. But I'm I'm I pay pretty close attention to what Pierre Polyev is saying. I haven't heard him say anything like that yet. And if he ever sees this video or any video I make, I will never vote for someone who wants to go to war in another country especially in a country where they have lots of assets, a.k.a. oil, that they want to steal. But we're going for a democracy. No, you're going for assets. We all know it. This game has been played over many, 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 many times. And we keep falling for it. I will not. So please, whatever you do, do not make any remarks. Well, oh, we're, we have to, if we have to send soldiers, we have to send drone strikes, oh, we'll do it. I'll never, ever vote for that. Ever. So if Pierre Polyev wants to keep my vote and for the other populist libertarians who are going to vote for him instead of Maxim Bernier, he better watch it because he could lose. Not, there's not a big population of people like me, but it, it's still important. He, our, our, us not voting for him could flip writings. And yes, I understand. People might say to me, well, Danny, he's still better on so many issues and Trudeau's a communist wannabe. Yeah, all those things are true. But if Pierre Polyev is going to come in there and just act like a regular politician, which is what I've seen my whole life, especially now considering he's pandering to the populist libertarian crowd, right? He's pretending to be some, or I shouldn't say he's pretending, I don't know yet, but he might be pretending to be this, you know, this new, you know, right-leaning populist conservative, which is what he's pandering to. If he's lying about that, then I'm done. So hopefully my suspicions are incorrect and in that he never talks about going and getting involved in other countries' elections or other countries' wars because that's going to piss off a lot of people. He can't afford to do that. Any kind of momentum that he gives back to the liberals is momentum that he can't afford to lose because once momentum starts to build the other side, it could keep going and going and going. So Pierre, if you don't want to lose that momentum... You can't blame me for not voting for you if you're not an actual populist. If you don't actually put Canada first, you can't blame me. That's on you. So if you ever see this, make sure you keep your promises and that you really are Canada first. Because me and hundreds of thousands, if not millions of other people, will not put up with it. So guys, let me know what you think in this comment section. What do you think about these new writings? Where do you think they're going to turn? And what do you think about my uh, last little rant there? Do you think that I'm incorrect for you know, standing up for populism and holding Pierre Polyev accountable? Or do you think that I should vote for him anyway, even if he turns out to be a warmonger? I always lo I love uh, reading and interacting with you guys. I really appreciate it. I also really appreciate everybody who likes and subscribes to this channel because it really helps me grow. Uh, thanks so much again for watching, guys, and I will be back shortly with another video.